everybody. It's Family of Flair coming to you from the kitchen again. Um, yes, I'm in the kitchen again today. I'm excited. I received a pretty large order, so um, I'm going to start working on it today. I thought it would kind of be cool to just let y'all come in, hang out with me in the kitchen, and um, we'll go through some different recipes, and hopefully maybe you'll see some things that you hadn't seen before, or I don't know about y'all, but I always love an opportunity to hear a different recipe or something new that maybe I haven't tried. Starting out today, um, I don't know if it's going to be in this order, but... Um, I'm going to be making some meatloaf, and I have to say this is um, not my meatloaf recipe. I can't take credit for it. This is my Aunt Lisa's recipe, and it's a little bit different from a traditional meatloaf, but everyone who's ever tried it loves it. I'm going to be making some scalloped potatoes to go along with that. Who doesn't love scalloped potatoes? Oh, I mean potatoes. Also, I'm going to be making some Mexican chicken, and this is a casserole that's been in my family for as long as I can remember. This was my mom's recipe, and there again, great staple to just have in your fridge, and um, you know, if unexpected company comes or expected company, um, you just pull it out. You can cook it frozen, you can let it thaw and cook it. Spanish rice, I'm going to be making a batch of that. I'm also going to be making some salsa. I have a bacon and cheese quiche that I'm making. And then the last thing I think I'm going to be making is an, like an omelet breakfast casserole. So I know before I came to you with videos about healthier choices, and I'm still all about healthier choices. Like I said, this is an order that I received. Like I was saying, I just release some videos about healthier choices and some of these you know some of them really aren't bad because you know the great rule to go by is 80 20 80 percent good 20 percent not so good you know so even on times when maybe you want to splurge or you're gonna have company or you're gonna um you know celebrate someone's birthday or a special occasion it's just a good rule to have some of these things that i'm making you could even make these healthier no problem you could do that with just about everything that i'm gonna make so anyways i just wanted to throw that in there because i haven't gone crazy i haven't gone off the deep end but like i said this is just an order that i received and so i'm getting this together I want y'all to hang out with me and um also um, you know, as you're watching this video, if you have a recipe similar to this, or if you've tried one of these, or you haven't, you know, drop something in the comments. Let me know um, what you think about it. And also, if you do like the video, if you do enjoy it, would you please um, hit the subscribe button and like it. Give me a thumbs up. Um, and I would really appreciate that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is this chicken has to be cut uh, in chunks. So what this is, this is four pieces of chicken breast, and I am going to just cut these into chunks. Um, you know what, it's all really about personal preference. Um, if you want large chunks, if you want small chunks, if you want to just shred it, um, you know, anyway, however you would like to make your chicken, that's what you need to do. Um, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm just going to cut this chicken up into chunks. What I like to do with it is I like to have both. I like to have some pieces that, you know, are even almost shredded, but then I like to have some pieces that, you know, have a little bite to them where I can tell what I've got something in my mouth. <laughs> I've got a piece of chicken in my mouth, not just a, a string. So, um, but it's really just all about what your preference is. Oh, that's one good thing about this casserole is you just get all your ingredients together and then you just put them in the bowl. Throw it all in there, mix it up. That is my kind of casserole or dish. It's just uh, very, very simple. And you take your chicken breast, you uh, bring it to a boil. And anytime you're cooking or you're gonna boil chicken, even if, say, you're going to bake it in the oven, you're going to cook your chicken or your meat before you put it in a casserole that's going to be, you know, put in the oven to cook again. One thing that I try to do is I do not let, I won't let my meat completely cook or maybe just really watch it. And as soon as it's done, 
get it out or get it out of the heat because then you're gonna put it into your casserole, you're gonna put it in the oven and you're gonna bake it more. So a lot of times if you let it cook too long in the first preparation, it's gonna end up kind of dry and tasteless. So I have found that that really helps. Also, what I wanted to show you too about two things about the chicken. This recipe calls for chicken broth. So what I did was, this is the pan that I boiled my chicken in. And as you can see, there's the broth is still in it. So don't go and buy, it calls for a cup of chicken broth. Don't go, you don't have to buy chicken broth. This is chicken broth. This is good chicken broth. So just boil, boil your chicken and save your broth pour up what you need, and you know what I do? I'll even take this leftover, I'll put it in a mason jar and put a lid on it. And you know, sometimes some of this little stuff in here, there's nothing wrong with it, but you know, maybe it's like, uh, I'm not sure about that. Well, you can just take that out with a spoon once you get it in your jar. That's great chicken broth. And you know what? You don't have to buy more. So I'm all about saving a little bit of money. Just to let you see, my chicken was cooked and it was perfectly fine to put it on my chopping, my cutting board. But, you know, it's just messy. It kind of makes up a mess and I knew I was gonna need to cut up an onion. So I have these little things here. They're actually from Pampered Chef, but it's just a little thin cutting mat. And they're so nice because you can do this. I made a mess cutting out my chicken, so now I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna put it in my sink, and my cutting board is clean for the next thing. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the onion. This calls for, um, it's gonna, it calls for one large onion, but I have a tendency to not put the whole thing in there, just because sometimes when you're cooking for other people, you know, some people don't like as much onion as I do. Um, you know, some people don't. So I try to keep that in mind whenever I'm cooking for other people. For me, I love onion. I love raw onion, cooked onion, roasted onion. So I would put the whole thing in it for me. So basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, put some slices in my onion and then I'm gonna cut this. Again, you don't want these to be in great big chunks, but as they cook, they're gonna go down some. And so, you know, you want them to be a pretty decent, about a medium sized cut you want to do with your onion and by the time they cook down then it will be just about perfect like I said I'm gonna use a little bit of that other one I'm gonna put a little bit more in there once again one of the easiest ways I know of to chop up an onion you know they have all kinds of cool little gadgets that will do all that stuff for you but I'm just an old-school girl I like the old fashioned, just a knife and a cutting board. I love to chop things up. One can of cream mushroom soup. We'll put this over here. Let's see, I'm gonna put, move this around where you can see it. Have our onion, we're gonna put in one can of cream of mushroom soup. Just put that right down in there. Okay, and then we're also gonna put in a can of cream of chicken soup. Now, we're gonna add our chicken broth. Okay, here's the chicken broth that we saved from what we cooked our chicken in. So we've got a cup of chicken broth. And you know what, you always wanna set, make sure you save a little extra just in case if it's a little bit dry or you know, sometimes you just don't know how things are gonna turn out. So to be safe, save a little extra. Now, remember when I was talking about the not so healthy part? Okay, this is a lot of cheese but this is a large casserole. This is gonna feed like eight people. Calls for one pound of cheddar cheese. But what I like to do is, I like to go ahead and add it in there, but I'm gonna leave a couple of handfuls because I like to put a little bit of cheese on the top of mine. So I'm gonna leave a couple of handfuls in there. Now we're gonna add um, one can of Rotel. Absolutely delicious, okay. Now, in this little bowl, I actually have a quarter teaspoon of powdered garlic and I have a one teaspoon of chili powder. 
but I was gonna share this with you. Um, I don't know if any of you have ever tried this. This is a uh, hot Mexican style chili powder, and I love it. It really does have just a little bit of a different taste to it, so I like to throw that in there. If I'm doing Mexican dishes, I like to use that Mexican style chili powder. Um, and that's it as far as the ingredients for this casserole. Doesn't that look delicious? Okay, so now let's put this over here. What we're gonna do is I've already sprayed my pan. Okay, I've got a nine by 13 baking dish. I've already sprayed it with some cooking spray. And then we have our flour tortillas. And we're probably gonna use all these. We'll just kind of see how it goes. I have a new pack. And what I try to do is I just lay it down in the pan like that, okay? Just lay it down in the pan, and then I'm gonna take, and we're gonna just scoop a couple of these little scoops. Because the uh, stuff that you have left, now you wanna tuck this good up and underneath of there so it doesn't come undone, and then what I do is I'll just kinda roll it back. Then take another one and you just do the same thing. You want to have enough of this mixture left, so at the end, you wanna be able to pour this over the top. Because if you don't, the part that's exposed on your flour tortillas can burn, it will burn. But if you get a little bit in the pan, no problem. It's all going there anyways. So we're just gonna keep going. When we lived in Oklahoma, we had a lady that was our neighbor. And every now and then she would bring over fresh homemade flour tortillas and she would bring them over in foil, wrapped in foil. And man, you could just see the steam coming off of them. Oh my goodness. They were so good. There's nothing like a homemade flour tortilla. Now, you'll see I'm kind of running out of room here. I've got two. So we're just gonna keep squishing them together. And also, another thing, you wanna make sure when you put your tortilla in there that you keep the flat part, I call it, I'll show you as you roll it up. You wanna make sure this part of your tortilla is on the bottom, it's facing the bottom of the pan so that it doesn't um, unroll, because as it cooks, it's gonna expand and move. So you don't want it to come unfolded. So make sure that that little flap is at the bottom. It's facing down on the pan. I have a little funny story to tell you about the flour tortillas. JC and I went to the grocery store and this was right after Jay and her got married. Now I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what I'm fixing to do so I can tell you the story as I'm doing it. Now I've got all these filled and I'm going to take the rest of the sauce, the rest of the filling, and I'm just gonna pour it over this pan. Make sure all the flour tortillas are covered very well. So back to the story. Okay, so we didn't know each other very well. And uh, she had told me that in, there's a, a grocery store in Texas that is amazing, H-E-B. If you ever have an opportunity, go to one. You can buy clothes in there. You can buy purses, jewelry, knickknacks. Oh my gosh, not e I'm not even gotten to the food part yet, okay? Anyways, people take notice. We all need H-E-B. So she takes me in and here I am in Texas with my Tennessee accent. And she had told me that if you hear a little bell, that it's fresh homemade flour tortillas. Of course, we're in there and we're shopping and all of a sudden I hear the bell. Okay, well, I completely stop what I'm doing, mouth falling open, the bell, the bell. You know, I'm looking at JC, where is it, where is it? So here we go. You know, we're here, you hear it, we'll run. Hear it over here, turn down this aisle. Hear it over there, turn down this aisle. So I'm running around like crazy trying to find the homemade flour tortillas. Well, I found them, all right, and they are. They're in this little um, box that's smoking. Um, it's, it's hot, and they open up that box, and you can buy those homemade fresh flour tortillas. Oh. It is so worth the trip to the grocery store. I know I embarrassed her because I was taking out of the bag, eating them right in the grocery store. So bless her heart, she um, 
JC, she has some stories to tell. <laughs> uh, and who knows, I'll probably end up telling you a couple other stories we have from the grocery store that are, are hilarious. Um, but anyways, here is the casserole. Look at this, doesn't this look delicious? Like I said, I saved that couple handfuls of cheese and I am just going to just, you know, put a little bit up on the top. Cause like I said, I like to have, you can cook it without the cheese, but to me, once it's cooked, I just, I like the way it looks. And I love when I eat it, having that crust of cheese. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in an oven at 350 degrees. And it's gonna cook probably for about 30 minutes. You know, everything in here is cooked. The chicken is cooked. So we're basically just heating everything, getting it to um, marry together, getting that cheese to melt and um, releasing all that goodness. So about 30 minutes, you'll see, it'll start bubbling up around the edges. Um, it'll start getting brown. So um, just keep an eye on it and maybe check it, do it for 10 minutes or 15 minutes, go back and check it. And then, um, like I said, it's all done. So when you the cheese gets good and melted and it's bubbling good, you're fine to take it out do is I'm gonna go ahead and cook this and then I'm gonna let it cool completely it has to be cooled all the way and then once it's cooled I'm gonna wrap it really good with some saran wrap and then I'm gonna wrap it really good with some foil and I'm gonna put this in the freezer and I'm gonna keep it frozen we're almost finished with the first order or the first item of the order so on to the next one <music> 